Good evening, fellow time travelers. I just got back from an amazing vacation in Greece. Luckily, we get to continue my big fat Greek experience on tonight's show when we talk about a couple of ancient Greeks who got mixed up with the wrong crowd, aliens from the moon. As you doubtless know, there's plenty of evidence to suggest that aliens, crop circles, and flying saucers existed way before what we call science fiction. The so-called oral traditions, stone sculptures, cave paintings, they all suggest ongoing contact between humans and extraterrestrials. Except these aliens probably weren't from the moon, and they probably weren't talking to Hercules. Ah, oh, Hercules. The subject of endless movies and TV shows. You know, the illegitimate son of Zeus. Let's see how old Herc measures up against the moon men. Now, of course, just to be clear, that's not Hercules. It's enough to turn a man. This excruciating struggle between man and beast, can you tell which is which? Anyway, this excruciating struggle between man and man in customized ape suit is one of the many such extravagantly awesome scenes from Hercules against the Moon Men. That's Jack Gentleman to you if you're not Italian. Anyway, Hercules against the Moon Men? In this scene, of course, the antagonist is a kind of cave-dwelling Neanderthal man. But Hercules has no problem fighting all comers. Moon men, cave men, repo men, whatever the hell you've got. Bring it on. Ah. What do we have here? There it goes. Yes, another amazing display of strength from Sergio Chani, who used to act under the name of Alan Steele. Well, acting is pushing it a bit. I guess that Alan Steele's pseudonym was Steele as in Steele by name, wooden acting by nature. Anywho, you can guess where this is going. I know where this scene is going, but that's because I watch too many midnight movies. It's all for the viewers. What can I say? I'm dedicated. I even brought you a gift. Kind of looks like an award. Which reminds me that tonight we're giving out a prestigious Igor Award for the best worst movie of tonight's show. The contestants are Hercules Against the Moon Men and the wonderfully silly 1983 film Prisoners of the Lost Universe. So the cute Charlie's Angels reject you see here is actually supposed to be a TV reporter. She and a guy who is a repairman slash martial arts champion and some old bald scientist dude from Real One have all been transported into this alternate dimension, right? Alone and desperate, Carrie, for that is her name, is about to make her first friend on the other side. And here he is now. You. Uh-huh. Yeah, you said it. Well, she's a braver, kinder soul than most you meet in today's unforgiving parallel universes. But this was a parallel universe from 1983, remember? A kinder, gentler America. Where overweight, balding, bearded men were actually paid to perform on screen. Yes, the post-career placement for American professional football players. Next, see what happens when you feed an ancient Greek legend through the midnight movie treatment. That fatal night, a fiery mass dropped from the sky onto Earth. Now we take a peek at the other nominee. Leaving nothing but a wasteland. Within the bowels of the mountain, 
a new and monstrous life was formed. From that day on, the people of Samar, in order to survive, were forced to offer their children as a sacrifice to the hungry mountain of death. What? They were forced to offer their children as sacrifice? Couldn't they have just offered themselves? Yeah, you go first, kids. We'll be right along. Yeah, right. I suppose these would be the teeth in the jaws of the mouth of the hungry mountain of death. Looks more like some kind of laser light show effect. Hmm. Aren't all the sacrificial victims meant to be children? They look more like angry adolescents at this distance. Well, that's one way to get them out of their bedrooms and out of Facebook. In any event, these unwilling junior citizens of ancient Greece are being led to their deaths on the orders of the wicked but tasty Queen Tamara, who we'll meet in a jiffy. The Wicked Queen is in a league with the moon aliens, you see, who are trying to awaken a moon goddess asleep inside the mountain. We do hope you are keeping up with all this because it's critical information. There will be questions afterwards. Listen to that additional dialogue. Absolutely top of its game. Rhubarbing going on there. ADR, it's called, which you may already know, additional dialogue recording. Mountain of Death hungry. Feed Mountain of Death. I'll speak to Samara. And this time she'll hear me out. I swear. This is the evil but foxy Queen Samara. Up to no good as usual. No doubt about it, she's a crafty one. Ah, but if only Hercules was as crafty as he is strong. The sneaky queen leads him into a trap, and all his strength does him no good once he's trapped inside a giant fishnet stocking. Apparently, he can throw men over his shoulder and pull trees from their roots, but when it comes to breaking out of macrame knots, he's completely powerless. I couldn't have put it better myself. She looks like a voodoo doll. Sad but true. No, oh, yeah. You see? You see what? They're absolutely identical. That is why I ordered you to bring the Princess Phyllis. Our Queen Selena will awaken from her long sleep and will live again through the blood of Billis. No! You're my own sister! You brought me here to kill me! How could you be such a monster? Tell me that it isn't true! Samara, I beg you! Now we all beg you. Samara! Samara! I beseech you! But hear that? She no. beseeches her sister! I thought you needed special equipment for that. No! Oh yeah, these are like the huge rock creatures that live in the bowels of the mountain and are in league with the sleeping goddess and the men from the moon. And if you don't do what the alien leader slash silver surfer tells you, then they chase after you. Well, they come after you ever so very, very slowly. The sacrifice will take place tomorrow night. Behold, when the planet Saturn comes into conjunction with Mars and under the evil influence of Uranus, mm. then will occur unimaginable disasters. The oceans will rise, the mountains crumble, and inexorably our moon will draw near the Earth. No, the Through writers of the apocalypse. Only our form of life can survive. It doesn't sound like any form of life would want to survive. We shall become the masters of the Earth. Of the destroyed Earth. But how shall I live? Slow turn left towards camera. You will have the reward you have earned, Samara. Your beauty will never fade. And your power will be equal to ours. You will possess all the riches of the world. Meaning all that's left of the riches of the world. There's still one task you must carry out. Kill Hercules. Ah, that's it. Have no fear. Hercules is already in my hands. He will die. So, Hercules is already toast, eh? We'll see about that. I think Alan Steele, the Man of Steel, might have something to say about that. Well, clearly a caged Hercules isn't a state of affairs that could last for long. So like any good supervillain hot Venus Queen Tamara arranges that Hercules be placed in some very easily escapable situation. Ah, 
saucy. Yes, don't forget the whips. In the actual film, this scene is interminable. I mean, you know, it's like half the movie. We just give you the uh, condensed version. Ooh, there's the wicked queen watching on lustfully. Anyway, the upshot is Queen Tamara takes a fancy to the heaving Hercules and decides to release him from the easily escapable situation involving an unnecessarily complex death. Next thing you know, they've shacked up together and she's all gooey-eyed. Wait, why is he smiling? Hey, Conan the Barbarian stole this idea. Even the best of us fall for the charms of biceps slathered in olive oil. What can I say? Women just want to be taken care of. Moving swiftly along to the big finale of Hercules against the Moon Men. Oh yeah, Max will be loving this, even if she pretends not to. A close-up on the chest muscles of Hercules himself. Anyway, you guessed it. This is the big finale of this spectacular sword and sandal epic. Thrilling stuff. Did I forget to tell you? Oh well, the bad Queen Tamara was already crushed by the stone creatures in Real 4. Now Herc just has to sort out the monsters or rock the Tin Man aliens. Marvelous, isn't it, how the hero, the bloke responsible for all this havoc and destruction is so impervious and unscathed by all those falling rocks. Yes, so anyway, Hercules is just about done here, except he has to save the cute but slightly dull princess chick before it's too late and make sure the evil goddess doesn't come to life. Here come the stone men again, in hot pursuit. Come on, Hercules. This film incidentally came halfway through a seemingly endless series of Hercules movies made in Italy around the late 1950s, early 1960s. Just one catch, we've been holding out on you. This was originally a Macist film, kind of a poor man's Hercules type character that was set in biblical days or ancient Rome or the 18th century or just wherever you wanted to stick them. So much for mythology. Anyway, Macist, Hercules, whoever, get on with it, you big hunk of manhood, you. Yeah, that's the spirit. Put your back into it, man. Destroy some priceless archaeological treasures. Explosions, yes, finally. Let's blow some stuff up. It's gotta be that part of the movie when I generally like to sit back and just let it all wash over me. Another fresh slice of midnight movie gold. What? Where are we now? Looks like a nature documentary all of a sudden. Now that's a jump cut in story and picture and continuity you wouldn't see many directors brave enough to even try these days. Mm. I may be needed in some other part of the world. Some other part of the world. Yeah, that's the Macist part. You can just put him in any setting. Well, you've probably guessed it by now, you hardened cynics, but this is the fond farewell scene at the end of the film. Aww. Or is it really farewell? Or just a segue to yet another sequel? Or maybe some sort of cheeky skin flick? How's that for cornball? And so Hercules rides off into movie legend. Or Maciste rides off into movie legend. Whatever, whoever he is, the big bare-chested lug, he rides off anyway with his best girl by his side. We learn something new every night. And that's why it's worth watching Max's Midnight Movies. But the real important question here is whether Hercules wins the prestigious Igor Award. We'll find out as soon as we come back from the break and enter into a parallel dimension. We dig deep, very deep, to find you cinematic treasure. We dig deeper than the deepest DVD bargain bin in outer space to find you classics like Prisoners of the Lost Universe. It's not exactly Sword and Sandal meets Alien, but it's in the same galaxy, if you know what I mean. Let's see if it's more deserving of the Igor Award than the Hercules flick. 
so in Prisoners of the Lost Universe, not so much mad as misguided scientist pushes the wrong buttons in the search for answers. And he, the telephone line repairman that looks like someone from a daytime soap opera, and a cute blonde TV reporter girl, are all transported into another dimension. I guess parallel universes can be exhausting. This is the cute TV reporter girl, and this is the master of the parallel universe. Find such a wildflower lost here in the wilderness. Especially one with hair the color of the sun. I bet you say that to all the Charlie's Angels rejects. Hey, who's that? Probably a cameraman who was bitten by a snake. It might interest viewers to know, incidentally, this film was shot in South Africa during the bad old days of apartheid. And they deserve one another. Did you really believe that scum like you could take these away from me? and replace me as warlord. No one can kill Cleel. No one! Well, obviously you have strong feelings about the subject, but there's no need to raise your voice. So you are less guilty, are you coward? Actor's name is John Saxon. He's had a long and full career, including a role recently in the weird oramic Bring Me the Head of Lance Henriksen. He was born in 1935, and his real name is Carmine Orico. You might not want to tease him about it, though. John Saxon holds a black belt in karate. No! no don't kill me, please! So, this is the not-too-bright repairman dude again. Stop admiring yourself and get on with saving someone, will ya? Skin of ivory, hair the color of the sun. Don't touch me. Ah, oh. And she speaks. That's right, and English too. How convenient for everyone. What other surprises do you have for me, wildflower? Let her go, you son of a bitch, or I'll kill you. Now that's acting. Ooh. Killed him. Repairman guy is such a good actor, he does his own stunts. <laughs> There's that karate coming out. Bring her. It's useful in this movie. Wait a minute, how's this guy alive? Do bear in mind the title of this classic celluloid gem, ladies and gentlemen. Prisoners of the Lost Universe. You have to assume the budget must have been enormous. I mean, think about it. They've had to recreate an entire lost parallel universe here. And I think given their budget, which didn't have enough change left over for a six pack of beer, they did quite well. Yeah, right. Anywho. The cute TV reporter and the lumberjack shirt wearing handyman keep being separated and having little adventures like this one. It's the repairman that's having the adventure this time. Clearly. Yeah, he has to win a fight with the big gold fella. Or he and his fellow travelers will all have their tongues pulled out and eaten before being incinerated. <laughs> ah, not a great choice. But look at those two guys. Maybe incineration would be a great alternative. Now, totally unspoiled. And those rugs really tie the room together. Whatever it is that's going on in here, it looks very intimate. I want to be disturbed. But take heart, romance addict. It seems fate has it in store that Carrie and Dan, the doofus repairman, should be reunited. Oh, God, no. Quickly. Super quick. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Dan the Man is a home starter plastic explosive expert. He's gonna rig the whole parallel universe to blow. But first, he's gonna get karate bonked by our man with the sword. Ah. I said, drop it. An ill-fated effort, but the monkey. I mean, the hot Charlie's Angels chick remembered a few tricks from her casting days. You take one more step and I'll blow your goddamn head off. Hmm. Uh-oh, the smolder. And now she's whimpering. What is this, this sexist chauvinist gonna have his way with her? 
Don't say it so. You conceited bastard. <clears throat> Take that for the women's rights. Wait, they, how do we cut away to, to these lost Star Trek episodes? Come on. And again, some more stunts performed by actors. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Because when you're escaping from a warlord's inner sanctum in a parallel universe, it's important to be wearing clothes that are light and flexible and easy to clean. You'll probably have gathered I'm not too keen on the repairman dude, partly because I'm just jealous that he gets the angel. <laughs> Hilarious, right? Ah, great. It's the comic relief Star Trek reject team. Actually, actor Peter O'Farrell, who eventually went on to play a Daily Prophet photographer in a Harry Potter film. Stop! <laughs> Why would you stop? Oh! Thanks, Quicksand Dude. You really helped us out. Kale's law is harsh. Yeah, I guess he's really supposed to be the comedian of the group. I need the gun. Yeah, yeah, the gun would come in handy. So there you have it, stargazers. This is what it looks like when a parallel universe blows up. Vanya, in this case. It's not something you see very often. So do pay attention to this staggering, cataclysmic, comic, I mean, cosmic event. Ah, and here comes that music that seems to say we've had a many fine 1980s style outdoorsy shoot 'em up adventure together. So whatever shape or size or color we may be, let's just hope this is big enough a sleeper hit that we can make a sequel and have change left over for a whole dozen beers. Oh yes, and by the way, isn't it just glorious watching things explode? Gary and the quicksand dudes seem to be getting on better all the time. Maybe lumberjack shirt repairman Doofus has competition for her affections. Well, maybe even Doofus has found himself a new love. Now this is Dr. Hartman, the guy who built the transporter that took them from California to wherever this is supposed to be. South Africa, as you may recall. And now our humorous little imp has found something shiny that he's buffing on his vest and now praying gleefully. What have you found? Just some cast off bauble with strange markings on it. Markings? Scribbling. How do I know? I can't read. Thank you. That's it! God damn it! That's it! Charlie's angel is cursing again. No wonder she didn't make it to daytime TV. No! No, wait! Ominous 80s synthesizer music. Wow, the pair of them must really feel as if they're being zapped back out of a parallel universe around about now. What about the war? That was funny. Absolutely atrocious. But which movie is so bad it deserves an Igor Award? Hercules Against the Moon Men or Prisoners of the Lost Universe? And the prestigious Igor Award goes to... Hercules against the Moon Men. <laughs> Sorry, Richard Hatch, but at least they had an excuse. It was made 50 years ago. Hercules is alive. He escaped from the trap you set for him. Alive? But how can he avoid death at the hands of my best soldiers? You underestimated that man. Remember, as long as he stays alive, he remains a threat to that destiny written on the stars. Well, that's all for tonight, Midnight Movie Lovers from Another Dimension. Join us next week for more Max's Midnight Movies. Kalinikta!